Jebret tim luar biasa boleh gak semua yang ada di sini yang semuanya menyaksikan kita kasih aplaus dulu buat semua jebret tim yang hadir karena gua mau lihat ada yang serius ada yang santai ada yang tiduran tapi teman-teman semua komit dan gua berterima kasih untuk itu dan gua luar biasa bangga ya karena ini tidak akan terjadi kalau kalian tidak mensupport ini. Gue juga pengen mengucapkan terima kasih untuk para pembicara. Boleh nggak aplaus juga semua yang ada di Zoom untuk memberikan aplaus untuk para pembicara. Juga gue mau kasih aplaus untuk teman-teman yang ada di belakang layar yang membuat acara ini begitu sukses. Sampai sore hari ini boleh aplaus lagi buat semua teman-teman yang ada di sini guys. Luar biasa dan... Salah satu yang dan benar satu yang akan menjadi highlights di acara kita hari ini adalah kita kedatangan seorang dua orang dari Inggris langsung. We have we have two great person from Tranmere Rovers that will join with us. So I would like to say hello first to Matt and Dan from Tranmere Rovers right now. Hello Matt and Dan, how are you? Hi, go on. <laughs> Hi, Valentino. Are you okay? Hi, everyone. Yeah, we are great today. So we already had like six topics and they all excited. And when we asked them, one of the topic that they really excited to waiting for is the topic that you both will deliver today. So it's really happy to have both of you right now in Jebret Media Workshop. So I'm so happy and so excited. So how are you, Matt and Dan there? Excellent, very good, thank you. We yes. have been coaching already this morning with our under 18 team and the first team uh, have been training next to us. Um, so we've had a really good morning. The weather's beautiful here at the moment. So got a little bit of a tan. Um, <laughs> but it's going well. <laughs> okay, um, I, I have to per I have to have permission from you that I will translate it first to the audience. Jadi yang tadi bicara adalah Dan dan di sebelahnya adalah Matt dan dia mereka mengatakan bahwa mereka baru saja melatih tim dari Tranmere Rovers dan suasana atau cuaca di sana sangat baik tapi membuat mereka kulitnya jadi lebih coklat ya. So I wanna give you a questions that how about the comparisons between weather in in uh, Tranmere Rovers and weather when you when you, when we when you were at Jakarta it's it's very different uh and i think it was probably the same it's quite cloudy over here and it was quite cloudy in Jakarta however in Jakarta it was about 35 degrees celsius and we got very very burnt we were very very red uh, but here we don't have that problem as much and um, it's a lot cooler and a lot more we're a lot more comfortable with, with, with it over here jadi barusan Matt jawab kalau waktu dia ada di Jakarta, waktu mereka ada di Jakarta tuh suhunya sampai 35 derajat. Jadi kalau tadi mereka bilang kayak tanning, tapi waktu di Jakarta tuh mereka kayak burn, kayak kebakar gitu. Jadi memang cuacanya berbeda, tapi mereka akan segera menyampaikan tentang sport science yang berhubungan dengan match analysis. So Matt and then will deliver about the sports science, the important, why it's important, and how about the development of the sports science in Tranmere Rovers. And also we'd like to hear about the example like when Supriyadi got trained in the Tranmere Rovers, something like that. So time is yours, and I'm, you know, if my English is not perfect, so I would like to say sorry first to Matt and then, okay? So the time is yours. Your English is much better than our Indonesian. <laughs> <laughs> But I can say, Salam apa kabar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dan. So, time is yours. Please give your presentations now to our audience. Jebret team. We call Jebret team. Please. Excellent. Um, so, do I want to talk maybe only 30 seconds at a time? And then you can maybe relay things, Val, or do, do you want us to talk for a little bit longer? Yeah, you can talk about a little bit longer and I will make the conclusions about what you're talking about. Okay, brilliant. So uh, the way that we coach every player here at, at Tranmere, uh, we use the four-corner model, 
So we look at, we don't just look at their technical ability, what they, what you see as them as players. We look at their physical capabilities, technical capabilities as one. We also look at how they interact socially. Uh, so that's another corner. And then psychological is, is one of the, the big corners that we like to work and develop players on. Jadi bagaimana mereka membuat sebuah analisa terhadap perkembangan pemain bukan cuma tentang secara fisik, bukan cuma secara teknis, bukan cuma gabungan di antara dua itu, tapi juga bagaimana secara psikologi dari faktor-faktor yang ada dari para pemain itu. And when we consider how we use sports science in helping to players develop in those four corners, it's you you do see a lot of physical development based on strength and conditioning work that we do with them. Jadi kalau melihat daripada empat hal tadi, kalau secara physical, secara fisik akan diukur dari bagaimana kekuatan dan conditioning dari para pemain itu. Uh, and it, it's it's probably worth noting that we don't train any one of the four aspects in isolation. We train everything all together and sports science helps us to make sure that uh, we're hitting every corner and we're coaching everything that we intend to coach. Jadi mereka bukan hanya melatih keempat itu secara terpisah, tapi mereka melatih secara keseluruhan dengan bantuan sport science sehingga dapat membantu para kepelat, para pelatih ini untuk bisa mengukur daripada para pemain tadi. We're also very fortunate, we're very lucky that our uh, location in the northwest of England We are 10 minutes away from John Moores University, which is one of the top 10. It's in the top 10 sports science universities in the world. And that's where a lot of our staff are trained. So we have really elite level understanding of sports science. Jadi sangat beruntung juga bagaimana posisi mereka di sana itu cuma berselisih 10 menit dari salah satu universitas di sana yang sangat bagus sport science-nya sehingga mereka bisa menggabungkan dan juga bisa membandingkan dari apa yang mereka dapat dengan universitas tadi. What is the university, sorry, then? Liverpool John Moores University. Jadi ada Liverpool John Moores University. Jadi itu adalah universitas di sana yang sangat bagus sport science-nya. Fantastic. So if we consider uh, when we were fortunate to train with Supri, If we look at um, the overview of the the time that they the, the time that he spent with us, the time that the training group had, we like to to look at the bigger picture before we then start looking at opportunities to train uh, the sports science aspect. Jadi waktu melihat bagaimana Supriyadi dan teman-teman latihan di sana, mereka bisa melihat Supriyadi itu bukan cuma langsung dari secara dianya sendiri, tapi juga lebih besar lagi pandangannya untuk mengukur aspek-aspek yang ada pada dirinya dan juga teman-temannya waktu itu. But the, the whole group, it wasn't just Supriyadi, we were very impressed with what um, what they already do out in Indonesia with regards to some aspects and, and parts of sports science. Um, in terms of the, the physicality of the players, we played them against some really good teams here in the UK and they were very impressive, they were very good. Jadi waktu ada Supriyadi, not just si Supriyadi, jadi bukan cuma Supriyadi tapi semua teman-teman yang waktu itu bareng-bareng Supriyadi, mereka mengukur dengan sport science tadi. Jadi bukan cuma Supriyadi tapi juga teman-teman lainnya. I think it's important as well that We we use it as coaches, but it's also an educational tool for the players. And I think one of the main things that uh, the players learned when they arrived here in the UK was the level of detail in nutrition and how important that is uh, in developing your physical and technical skills. Nutrition was a huge part and, and we were able to teach a lot of that stuff. Jadi waktu datang ke sini juga ini menjadi sebuah momen yang bagus buat pelatih yang juga waktu itu datang bersama Supriyadi dan teman-teman dan yang paling penting adalah bahwa untuk mengukur fisik itu bukan cuma sekedar fisiknya tapi mengukur nutrisinya. Karena nutrition atau nutrisi itu sangat penting untuk seorang pesepak bola. So if we if we skip on uh, the next to the next slide we can see an overview of the time that 
the time that the guys spent with us. And it's when we look at this, uh, the overall view of the program, we can target specific days to train specific traits. So we might leave time for nutrition in one aspect. We might train tactical skill in, in, another, in another moment. But having an overview of the time that the guys spend with us, this is the way that we like to, to periodize and systematically train uh, to make sure that we're, we're training every corner. Jadi waktu mereka datang ke sini ini adalah schedule yang kalian bisa lihat waktu mereka datang ke sini. Jadi mereka menggabungkan bukan hanya secara taktik tapi juga dengan aspek-aspek lain seperti yang tadi dibilang nutrisi dan lain-lain. Dan ini yang akan mereka waktu itu dapatkan dan memang mereka dapatkan itu dengan schedule yang jelas dari mereka seperti ini. And whilst we do this as a group, so we do it all together as a group because that's really big for the social side of things. What you see on this um, on this document is an individual plan that we gave to Supriyadi, and every single one of those players received their own plan. So while some of the stuff that Supriyadi we we were saying that he needed to do in the gym, it was different for what other players were having to do. So every player is unique in that aspect. Jadi waktu kalian lihat yang ada di agenda ini, ini adalah bukan cuma buat Supriyadi, tapi buat teman-teman yang lain yang ada di grupnya Supriyadi waktu itu. Namun ini yang membuat perbedaan ketika kami mengukur, mungkin Supriyadi perlu bagus di gym, tapi pemain lain belum tentu di situ. Tapi akhirnya semua diukur berdasarkan kebutuhan dari aspek-aspek pemain tadi. If we we can skip on to the next slide, so the the document that you see in uh, this was given to Supri and every player had one. So it, it's it's like a recap for them of what they have done. And then it with, when they receive the information later on, it's more of a reference point so they understand exactly what it is that we were trying to achieve. Jadi waktu mereka dikasih seperti ini, ini adalah salah satu poin yang mereka sampaikan untuk dilakukan atau untuk diberikan kepada Supriyadi dan teman-teman yang lain sehingga mereka bisa ngikutin apa yang diminta dan mungkin saja berbeda yang diminta untuk dia dan untuk teman-teman yang lain. And uh, so there's a couple there's a couple of sessions uh, session plans here but we can skip on um, to there's a match report um, in a couple of slides time on the on the next one. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Um, so whenever when we consider the training session every session it then comes back to the four corners and we consider the pros and cons and how much of each corner that they've managed to develop within that session. Dan ini kita bisa lihat di sini bagaimana ini adalah salah satu modul sesi yang diberikan untuk satu sesi tertentu dilakukan berulang-ulang untuk pemain-pemain tersebut. And everything that we train and everything that we do is with uh, a realism uh, to the game because we're, we're we're training to play the game so everything is is leading up to that dan yang mereka lakukan itu harus berhubungan dengan memang yang dipentingkan dalam sebuah pertandingan jadi tidak ada materi yang diberikan yang tidak ada hubungannya dengan kepentingan dari orang-orang yang diberikan materi tadi and then i think it's really important to mention as well when when we're using sports science I said it's not it's not used um, in isolation. So there's lots of different sports science sort of encompasses what we're trying to do. Um, so the example on the screen at the moment is it's it's a scout report from a game. That's that's just like the visual what the coach has seen and what he's uh, recognized it, like live. And then the 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 idea of the analysis stuff that we'll talk on later is does that support what the coach thought? Does that support what the player experienced? And, and is it a fair reflection on, on what we witnessed? Jadi yang kalian lihat di sini adalah yang dilihat oleh sang pelatih atau tim pelatih ketika melihat mereka langsung. Tapi sebenarnya cakupan dari sport science itu jauh lebih luas dari ini. Namun paling tidak inilah laporan yang diberikan oleh pelatih kepada pemain-pemain terutama dalam hal ini teman-teman dan juga Supriyadi yang langsung disaksikan oleh tim kepelatihan di sana. And if we just skip forward one more slide um, to sort of 
So that's the next part of the scout report. But one of the biggest things, um, the data that we get from the sports science and, and from our thoughts as coaches is obviously one thing. But if you don't have the interaction with the players themselves, then it doesn't really matter because the players are the ones that know their body the most out of everything. And whilst the data can support to, to add certain things that they don't realise and, and help us out, if you don't have that interaction with the players, then it's never going to be a success. Jadi walaupun data-data dari sport science itu sudah sangat banyak seperti yang kalian bisa lihat di sini, namun interaksi or interactions dengan para pemain itu sangat penting karena dari data yang disajikan perlu juga kemudian dikomunikasikan dengan pemain itu tersebut karena kalau enggak enggak bisa berguna semua data-data itu. Brilliant. Uh, we can skip forward again. Um, there's a couple of session plans, so uh, it, it's very uh, it's all in date order. So this is uh, as the guys were experiencing uh, the course. So these, the, these two sessions that you've just seen up on the screen, this GPS report now is the, is the report from the previous two sessions. Dan kalau kalian lihat di sini ada two sessions, ada dua modul yang tadi dikasih lihat. Dan GPS report ini adalah data-data atau angka-angka yang menunjukkan hasil daripada dua slides yang ada before atau dua data yang di previous atau yang sebelumnya. Jadi ini adalah GPS report yang mengutarakan secara detail. And then with a report like this, yeah. it, it actually did support what we witnessed as coaches and what we've been informed from the coaches uh, out in Indonesia. Um, so it... it It, we'll go through a little bit more of the detail in a second. Ya, jadi ini adalah data-data yang menunjukkan selanjutnya ini adalah data-data yang menunjukkan bagaimana kita bisa melihat angka-angka dari para pemain dan kita akan lihat bagaimana lebih detail di selanjutnya. So if we just uh, sorry, if we can skip back kita, just two slides, I'll, I'll run through it quite quick, quickly. If we go back to the GPS report. Ya. If you look at uh, Supriyadi, mm -hmm. uh, so sorry, the previous one, yang couple of slides. Yang Supriyadi, There yeah. you go, perfect. Yeah. If you look at that, then you can tell Supriyadi covered the most distance. Mm -hmm. Supriyadi covered the most distance per minute of training. He covered the most sprint distance. His top speed was the highest speed and his work ratio was the top work ratio. So that supported what we witnessed, uh, that this guy is a, a top level player. Uh, and he's he's then somebody that we would identify for the other players to get their level up to the same level as him. Jadi kalian bisa lihat ya dari data-data di sini Supriyadi datanya itu adalah pemain yang paling jauh dalam berlari dalam satu pertandingan termasuk yang paling jauh jaraknya dalam per minutes distance per minutes dan ini yang membuat data-data yang akan memacu supaya pemain-pemain lain bisa seperti dia. But what the but what the GPS data that you see can help to help help do to for us coaches. So when you're looking at the play and you see that a player is really is really struggling and really tired, the data doesn't lie. So the data could say actually he's got a little bit more in him that he can give to the team. Whereas we might see it as a visual that he's absolutely he he can't go any further. Whereas in reality, the data which is collected over a long period of time suggests that in, in reality. He can go that next step further, so it helps us as coaches impact our decision making during training, during matches as well. Jadi dari data-data ini, walaupun pemain itu kelihatannya pengen main terus, kelihatannya bagus, tapi ini bisa nunjukin kalau dia lagi capek misalnya, kalau dia lagi nggak oke okay misalnya, sehingga ini akan membantu para pelatih untuk making decisions, untuk membuat keputusan mereka akan dikasih latihan seperti apa dan mereka layak nggak untuk dimainkan dalam sebuah pertandingan. And that, that's just one side of so and then the other point of it is the data suggests that we've worked the player too hard or the player has exceeded what he would normally do. So we need to rein it in a bit as coaches and identify that. And that fits into the whole grand scheme and the big plan that we've got on a weekly basis and a monthly basis. Bukan hanya untuk mengetahui data tadi, tapi juga data ini bisa membuat para pelatih untuk membuat mereka harus lebih baik lagi dari apa yang mereka dapatkan sehingga para pelatih bisa melakukan sebuah hal yang membuat mereka jadi lebih baik lagi dari yang biasa banget mereka lakukan. Okay, so once we identified uh, Supriyadi as a as a player that was 
easily at the at the level to compete with our older players. Uh, we then um, the data informed our decision to say yes, he's ready to train uh, at the level. And then the next couple of slides shows uh, the two sessions that he he took part in with our players. And then it's got his data with the, the players here from Tramir as well. Next slides. So then, go to be yeah. Next. yeah, yeah. Jadi dari data-data yang diberikan tadi oleh teman-teman tadi itu, menunjukkan bahwa Supriyadi memang layak untuk bermain di level yang berbeda. Dan kita akan lihat dari data yang baru ini bagaimana Supriyadi di atau dibandingkan dengan pemain-pemain dari Tranmere Rovers. So uh, during the session he was training with players that were a year or two years older than him. It's worth noting and also uh, for the sake of the data uh, CS which is the third set down from the top he okay. was returning from injury so he was doing a, a, a different session to the rest of the guys. Jadi kalau dilihat dari data-data ini kita bisa lihat Supriyadi ditaruh di tim yang ada isinya pemain-pemain Tranmere Rover satu tahun sampai dua tahun lebih tinggi dari mereka. Jangan lihat dari yang CS karena CS itu adalah pemain yang baru sembuh recovery dari cedera. But then even compared to the older Tranmere players, uh, Supriyadi covered the most distance, uh, the most distance per minute. Uh, his sprint distance was the second highest. Uh, and his top speed was comparable to players that are two years older than him. Dan dari data ini kita bisa lihat seorang Supriyadi tetap dengan pemain-pemain yang satu tahun dua tahun di atasnya melakukan jarak lari yang paling banyak, jarak lari per menit yang juga paling oke. Okay. Dan untuk sprint distance atau jarak sprint dia adalah the second, nomor dua dari pemain Tranmere yang lebih tua dari dia. So when when we as coaches were making judgments and saying Supri's attitude is uh, top. His, his uh, he's got a great attitude to training. His commitment and his work rate are fantastic. When we look at the work ratio, he's got the highest work ratio. And again, the data supported what we were witnessing as coaches and what we felt was was right. Jadi ketika melihat data-data data ini ditambah lagi attitude ataupun perilaku daripada Supriyadi. Ditambah juga hal-hal lain yang perlu untuk dilihat oleh pelatih yang secara langsung witness melihat penampilan dari Supriyadi ditambah dengan data, maka itu yang membuat mereka yakin dengan keputusan terhadap seorang Supriyadi. Uh, and then if you go to the next slide, uh, then this is something that we would we produce on a daily basis for every player, um, so they they would be able to see uh, exactly what they've done in training. Uh, in terms of the GPS data, uh, it, you know, it, it's it's fully transparent. The data doesn't lie, as Matt said, and it's there for the players to access it and see how they performed in training. Dan ini adalah hasil dari GPS yang dipakai oleh pemain. Kalau kalian tahu tuh biasanya dipakai di dalam jersinya. Dan data itu tidak bisa berbohong. Jadi ini ditunjukkan kepada pemain, kalaupun pemainnya bilang enggak kok, tapi data menunjukkan itulah data atau statistik yang ada dari GPS tadi. And then finally, the, the was a, there's a summary page just after, um, just to sum, sum up what the data was telling us as coaches. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's in Indonesian as well. It's been translated. Um, so I don't know if you guys can read it, but um, it would just give a reflection on what, what we'd seen, what the data was telling us. Yeah, dan kemudian ada resume sebelumnya. Ada resume yang disampaikan secara... Data dan I will I will I will try to read it first, okay, Matt and then. Jadi berdasarkan data laporan GPS selama 70 menit, Supriyadi berlari sejauh 5,05 km. Ia dapat mencapai jarak 72 km per menit dan termasuk yang tercepat bila dibandingkan dengan para pemain lainnya. Untuk lari jarak pendek, sprint ia dapat menempuh 243 meter. Kecepatan tertinggi yang capai adalah 6.60 meter per detik per second sedangkan untuk rasio perbandingan antara ia bekerja dan beristirahat adalah 29% atau 29%. Itu adalah sebagian dari yang bisa disampaikan. So, jadi itu adalah data dari GPS secara summary atau secara kesimpulan. Yeah. And then um, that's that's all with with that document and um, Valentino I think there was another um, document that we sent which was again GPS data which shows what we do with our, our youth team um, our under 18s. 
and there is another data jadi ada data lain juga tentang youth team atau tim muda yang diberikan dari Matt and Dan tadi ya yeah, we will prepare it first Matt and Dan jadi well, that's fine yeah. um, every, everything in uh, that we're talking about it informs the the coaching sort of continuum and it, it works in a circle so it's um, it informs us what happened in training so that's where the GPS data comes in it informs us what we are going to try to achieve at the weekend um, and that's what we'll talk about a little bit now and then it and then again it comes back into a circle did we achieve what we wanted to does the data reflect that and and can we do things differently moving forward Jadi inilah dia pentingnya data-data yang ada, bagaimana dari data itu menunjukkan apa pencapaian yang sudah dilakukan, kemudian adalah mau mencapai apa di pertandingan hari Sabtu itu, dan setelah pertandingan itu dibandingkan lagi apakah tujuan yang kita inginkan itu tercapai atau tidak. Itulah pentingnya sport science yang dipakai oleh Trainer Rovers. And we're very fortunate at the club to have this technology available to us and we acknowledge that not every coach in around the world has all of these these technology for them so it's just being able to create something with your group that you can then compare and then continue to monitor over a period of time so it might be uh, a short distance of sprinting that you have and just comparing the players and then doing that a couple of times a week or or the week after and then you're able to compare those results from from last week to to what's happened this week and whilst you might not have the actual numbers and the data you can still get a visual of what the the different players are achieving and who's who's impressing and who's going forward and who's not going as far as they can. Jadi dari data ini mereka mengatakan cukup beruntung sebagai klub yang punya data-data yang begitu lengkap karena tidak semua klub di seluruh dunia ini yang punya data seperti mereka. Dengan data ini mereka benar-benar bisa mengukur seorang pemain ketika tampil di pekan ini dan kemudian bisa membandingkan dengan apa yang mereka capai di minggu depan dan kemudian bisa dibandingkan lagi mana pemain yang meningkatkan kemampuannya, mana pemain yang tidak. So again, um, it comes back to the, the overview of the training delivery and the certain times within the week where we can use the analysis to, to, to help us. So what's up on the screen is a, a, the most recent under 18s game last Saturday. Um, we, we lost 3-1, um, but it's at an under 18 level for us, it's more about individual performance rather than the results of the team. Jadi ini adalah data yang baru banget yang ditunjukkan di 7 Agustus 2021 mereka kalah t- mereka skornya 3-1 dan ini adalah data U18 di mana mereka bukan mementingkan hasil tapi mereka mementingkan proses yang bisa dilihat dari data-data ini. So even though the result was disappointing there was lots of positives um, and we felt it as coaches that the team actually played really well and the data that followed the game actually supports that we we actually played very well and the other set of data that shows the amount of possession that we had the amount of chances that we created reflects that we actually played a lot better than than the scoreline would suggest jadi dari data ini memang hasilnya disappointed hasilnya mengecewakan tetapi paling tidak dari data ini menunjukkan bahwa mereka sebenarnya secara permainan tidak kalah dilihat dari peluang yang mereka lakukan mereka lebih banyak jadi paling tidak mereka punya alasan untuk mengevaluasi hal yang lain daripada sekedar hasil akhir yang tidak mengembirakan itu and I think that we can fall into that trap of always thinking that the best players are playing in the best teams now obviously you're going to have a good collective group and that goes a long way however when the two of us when we were in Jakarta with uh, getting sunburns every day and <laughs> um, we were identifying some of the better players at the tournament that we saw and one of the players I think participated in the final but I think the other player that we really highlighted and really liked he was in a team that didn't get necessarily very far in the competition but he was someone that we identify as could if he was in that in a in a, in a team that was better then they would excel even more so he still stood out in a team that that didn't get the results and it's just being careful about that and not focusing too much on the teams that are always always winning because that's unfair on some of the players that are are doing a really good job but just don't have the supporting players around them Jadi dari, dari data seperti ini tuh bisa menggambarkan bagaimana seorang pemain itu memang bisa kelihatan menonjol di timnya walaupun timnya kalah Waktu mereka di Jakarta, sunburn, waktu mereka juga kulitnya sampai kebakar, mereka ngelihat pemain-pemain yang bisa tampil di final, 
itu belum tentu yang menang itu yang pemainnya ada yang lebih baik. Jadi it's not fair, itu nggak adil kalau cuma mengukur seorang pemain itu dari hasilnya aja, tapi harus dilihat dari permainannya. Okay, we, so what you see is like the review from the previous game, but that would form part of the plan towards the next game. So we we do have another document that we sent over. I don't know if it if possible to get that up. But um the, the next yeah yeah we yeah so the, the these these are just like summaries of games yeah. that happen so we might go through Langsung this on the Monday then the um the video that we sent through would be what we were looking towards for the next week so th this stuff okay. would come in review early in the week and then as the week progressed we'd look at what the opposition are doing and what we're trying to achieve next weekend. Jadi ini adalah sebuah hasil daripada yang terjadi di pekan ini atau pekan sebelumnya di mana setelah ini mereka harus persiapan untuk ke next week atau ke pertandingan berikutnya. Jadi ini adalah hasil di minggu sebelumnya tapi mereka harus prepare untuk minggu sesudahnya. So you will show the video. I mean you already sent the video. Sorry. Yeah, I think the video was sent with the other okay. documents. Um, if okay, if that's they, possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We replay. already received. Sorry, so they still prepare. But actually, how about my English? Is it? Is it? I, oh. I can translate. I can translate it perfect. Amazing. Very good. But very, you don't know good. if I'm translated right or not, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't need us, Valentino. You're okay. <laughs> but at least you. But I. But at least I convinced what you said in my. Bahasa Indonesia. <laughs> well, that's that's what we have no idea what you're saying, Valentino. You could be saying anything, so you might just be saying bad things about us. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We gotta. Uh, so now, um, Mr. Wandi also here, and he's laughing when you said that you don't know if I'm saying bad words for you or not. So I have not any guts to say bad words since the owner of the one of the owner of the tramway is here, right? Brilliant, <laughs> Wendy. Good to see you, one. Good to good to have you on, Wendy. Uh, oh, yeah. Hey, how are you? Hey. Hi, Wendy. Everything good? All good? Very good, oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. Valentino is looking after us, and he's translating very well. So yeah. we're all good. That's good. That's good. I'm 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 reviewing reviewing his uh, his English. <laughs> <laughs> if, if no good, I will I will fire him. <laughs> take care, take care. Say say hi to everybody. Take care, take care. See you. <laughs> so in the couple of hours, jadi tadi itu Pak Wandi itu ya CEO-nya CEO CEO dari Jebret Media dan so he's the CEO of the CEO of the CEO of Jebret Media, right? Matt and then so I'm the CEO. Simon is the CEO of the CEO. And Wandi is the CEO of the CEO of the CEO, right? <laughs> Correct. Uh, and uh, he, and he, looked after us. he looked after us very well. And you looked <laughs> after us very well when we were in Indonesia last year. We're, uh, we're looking forward to coming back and seeing everyone again. Jadi mereka senang banget karena Pak Wandi juga sangat memperhatikan mereka waktu ada di sini, di sini. Dan mereka sangat menantikan untuk bisa ketemu lagi. So even in the couple of hours, he will fly to sta uh, United States. He still came here to watch... Trend me over session first. Brilliant. Brilliant. Awesome. Brilliant. <laughs> no, but it's, it's been it's been good. Just just part of the, the relationship we have with Indonesia. I mean, you see our kit, our no, wrong side. Our kit sponsors Mills. Yes. Um, it's brilliant. It's really, really good. Uh, everyone, all the first team staff, all the players are loving it. Um, so it's really exciting. The relationship that we have with Indonesia is only going from strength to strength, uh, and we're very grateful to have have this relationship with everyone over in uh, in Jakarta and, and Surabaya. Jadi teman-teman dari Tranmere Rovers is really happy, senang sekali having relationship, punya hubungan yang baik dengan kita dari Indonesia. Bahkan sekarang jersinya juga Mills itu dari Indonesia. Jadi kita pengen banget kerjasama ini dengan Indonesia itu berlangsung terus. So the video is ready. So brilliant. Can we start it? Bisakah kita mulai videonya? So, selamat menyaksikan. Yeah, so this is just an example of, um, this is from last season, but we have a game tomorrow and we'll do something very similar. Um, if you just, so it, that shows obviously the league table and, and the results, but if you pause it pause, here pause. for us, if you just stop it there. 
Um, these are just, just little. Actually, we'll just we'll just let it run and we'll just talk okay, over okay, it. Okay, okay, We'll just let it run. Just play it. Yeah, the, this we'll just play it because that's how we try and keep it concise for the players and yeah. short. So it's only it's only four or five minute video. Okay. And it's the so this is what we will go through with the the lads the day before the game. Um, and just give each individual just some little tips and little pointers that what the opposition do really, really well. So this this striker and um, that we highlighted before, he um, he scored a lot of three goals against us in the first time he played them. Um, and the second time he played them, he didn't score any because we, we dealt with him differently and the players knew what to do. Jadi ini adalah sebuah video yang menunjukkan bagaimana tadi kita lihat secara possessions ini mereka bisa tampil dan dianalisa semua di situ. We don't want to bombard the players with information and make it too confusing. We know what we do as a as a team. We know what our strengths are and and if we if we play to our strengths regardless of the opposition then we know that we've got a great chance of winning. But if we can just get little pointers from what the opposition do then that will give us an even better chance. So just spotting a few weaknesses that have been noticed in the last few games that we might be able to exploit. Jadi mereka nggak mau bombardir pemain-pemain ini dengan data-data yang ada, takutnya mereka malah bingung, tapi mereka paling tidak ngasih tahu gimana caranya dengan data tadi mereka bisa punya solusi daripada kekurangan yang dilihat dari para pelatih tadi. We'll go through what they do in possession, um, what their main attacking threats are, uh, how they how they get the ball into those situations, so how can we stop them from getting the ball into the, the final thirds for the attackers to come into play. Uh, and then we'll also show them a lot of out, out of possession, what they're like out of possession. Um, do they press high? Do they sit back and defend deep? Uh, because that is going to affect um, our, our players' decision making um, and how they're able to cope on the day of the game. Di sini ini bisa kita lihat bagaimana pemain-pemain itu dikasih data untuk bisa membuat sebuah perebutan bola, kemudian mereka membawa sampai final third, sampai akhirnya mereka bisa menyelesaikan itu dan menentukan apakah memang dengan high pressing ataukah dengan cara-cara yang lain dari komposisi sebuah permainan. So you see from the the uh, the last clip and from these clips in the last one definitely they like to get the ball into the channels because they know that they've got a, a strong center forward who's quite good in the air and uh, also very quick on the ground, but how can they get it out wide? Because they push players forward quite often. Um, so how do we stop that from happening? Uh, and what do we have to do to, to prevent that from happening? Jadi di sini bagaimana kita bisa melihat kalau mereka menganalisa lawan yang sangat bagus dari sisi pinggir tadi, mereka punya penyerang yang sangat tajam, bagaimana cara menghentikan mereka, bagaimana cara mengatasi serangan-serangan yang mereka lakukan. So we look at some of their strengths and how we can prevent them from achieving their goals and then we'll look at their weaknesses so this bit now is just going through where we feel that our game can exploit their weaknesses jadi ini adalah cara bagaimana mereka kemudian membuat sebuah analisa untuk melihat bagaimana kelemahan-kelemahan dari tim lawan dan bagaimana mereka bisa mengatasi kelemahan tadi and again um, everything is individualized like some players like to see this stuff before a game and some don't particularly you know want to think about it so it's just offering as much information as we can to the players so that like Matt said we're not bombarding them but I was the the type of player that I like to see who I was up against I like to know as much about the striker I was playing against what foot did he play with how many goals has he scored etc so for those guys then this stuff's brilliant jadi ini kita bisa melihat bagaimana para pemain itu sekali lagi diberikan data yang cukup, tidak perlu dibombardir. Yang penting mereka akhirnya bisa melihat juga hasilnya mereka dapatkan, berapa gol yang dia cetak, berapa kesempatan yang mereka sudah mendapatkan, berapa kesempatan yang mereka bisa buka. Itu adalah pada akhirnya yang mereka akan butuhkan. And whilst we may only show this to the players the day before the game or the afternoon before the game, as coaches we have seen this earlier on in the week. So we are able to plan our coaching sessions uh, around how we're able to exploit the opposition. Um, for example, today we know that the team we're playing tomorrow, Bolton, their fullbacks are going to push really high, which means that we have a lot of space in between in those areas that we can exploit. So how can we how can we best counter that? How can we counterattack that? And that was formed part of our session of what we did today. 
Jadi ini bagaimana mereka itu bisa melakukan analisa itu bahkan seminggu sebelum pertandingan bisa dikasih lihat datanya ke para pemain seperti pertandingan yang mereka lakukan hari ini mereka tahu bagaimana fullback mereka itu akan pressing ke atas paling nggak mereka tahu ada kelemahan di sisi itu yang mereka bisa pakai untuk mengatasinya. So we have in possession and we have out of possession but then also as the video will roll on we have set pieces and um, because set pieces are one that we can easily identify and we can easily uh, we can easily counteract that. So we show the players what they do. Each of our players will have a, have a responsibility for the set piece. So they'll just need to identify who they're marking. Um, if there are any clever set plays that the opposition have, any free kicks or corners, how can we stop that from happening? Dari data ini kita bisa lihat juga bagaimana secara set plays atau set pieces mereka ini kalau jago dalam tenangan penjuru mereka bisa analisa siapa yang mereka, biasanya mereka kasih, siapa yang biasanya mereka tuju dan mereka harus tahu cara menghentikan dari set pieces lawan tersebut. But at the end of the day we just want our players to get their head on the ball if we're defending and get it away or if we're attacking get their head on the ball and we can score a goal. Dan di sini juga bisa kita lihat bagaimana mereka bisa menganalisa di saat mana atau di titik siapa bola itu akan bisa diberikan sehingga bola itu akan bisa menghasilkan gol dalam set play atau set pieces itu. It's uh, when when we said before about when we're working with under 18 players it's not all about winning but at the same time Our under 18 players, the next step for them is to be a full professional and to be working in the first team environment. So for them to understand how to win games and, and, and what goes into the tactical side of the game, it's important for them to, to get those messages so that when they go up to the first team, it's, it's not new for them to be trying to win games and trying to do things in the right way. Jadi seperti yang dibilang kalau under 18 atau U18 mereka bukan merupakan kepentingan yang menjadi hal yang utama. Tapi mengerti secara taktik mereka kemudian tahu bagaimana harus bermain. Itu yang membuat mereka kalau mereka naik ke first team atau tim yang pertama atau tim senior mereka. Mereka tahu apa yang harus mereka lakukan. But that's largely what we do on the analysis side and it's very similar um, with what the first team do as well. The difference with the first team is that they're able to analyze during the game. And so our analysts will be watching the game from high up uh, and they'll have on the, the, the mic on the, on the speaker to so the coach down at the or the first team manager and they'll identify stuff and show, show, them, um, show them stuff. Uh, sorry. Uh, at half time. So during the breaks and play that the analyst has been able to see and they can they can do that in real time. Oh really? So you guys communicate during the game? Yeah. So okay. the so they they can they can watch the the first half, for example. Yeah. They can then clip some of the stuff that's happened in the first half, show it at half time on on a tele on a screen uh, in the changing uh -huh. room, so that they can fix it for going forward in the second half. Amazing. Jadi mereka itu ternyata di pertandingan tersebut ada analis yang nonton dari atas ngelihat bagaimana secara data pemain-pemain ini tampil. Mereka berkomunikasi at the half time atau pada saat uh, pada saat istirahat mereka kasih informasi ke pelatih. Data-data yang ada bisa dipakai untuk dipakai pelatih menuju second half atau ke babak kedua. Wow. I think um, to, to kind of sum things up in terms of sport science, we've talked a lot about uh, data and analysis today, but it's worth noting that that's only one part of the sport science, like the more rounded way of delivering it. But it's important, it's really important because the data and the analysis can then inform what we need to do with the players. So if you notice from the data that somebody's top speed needs needs improving, that then informs the strength and conditioning elements of training, which again is, is sports science led. Jadi dari data dan analisa yang kalian lihat ini, ini hanyalah one of the part. Ini hanyalah adalah salah satu bagian dari sport science yang begitu luas. Dan ini bisa dipakai nanti misalnya untuk hal-hal lain seperti sport science yang dibutuhkan untuk bisa membuat sebuah kebaikan peningkatan dari data yang dilihat tadi. So, this is just one of the part of the sport science, this data and analysis, right? Okay. Um, so, it, it's a major part. Um, I'd say analysis okay. uh, is, is one. I'd say nutrition uh -huh. is another major part of sport science. And then you've got the strength and conditioning training. So they're the, the main sort of three focuses of our sports science department. Jadi ada tiga hal yang sangat penting dalam sports science department, yaitu ada data dan ada nutrisi, kemudian ada strength and conditioning, yaitu adalah penguatan dan juga hal-hal yang harus dilakukan untuk mensupport yang dua tadi. 
And I think it's just important to realise and understand your players because there are some things that certain players react better to, some players react a little bit worse to. So you just need to judge it on an individual basis as, as, as well as the group. Jadi juga harus dibandingkan kepada pemain-pemainnya, ada pemain yang kemudian langsung bisa ngikutin apa yang mereka minta, ada yang perlu adaptasi untuk apa yang mereka minta. And then it brings us back to the point uh, we probably made at the start. It's brilliant for us to have all the data and it's great for us to to work in this way, but at the end of the day, a lot of the um, a lot of the feelings and as players, as coaches, that players know where they need to improve. We make that quite clear to them. The data just supports that, and it's one. It's a small part of the overall big picture for us. Jadi data-data tadi seperti yang dikatakan di awal tadi hanyalah sebagian hal yang diberikan untuk mensupport pelatih untuk bisa dikasih lihat ke pemain bagaimana secara angka. Angka-angka atau hasil-hasil dari pemain dan itu adalah bagian dari pembuatan keputusan untuk mendukung seorang pelatih. Oke, Matt and Dan, thank you very much. So now we gonna, so we gonna do the question and answer sessions. Is that okay with you? Of course, yeah. yeah. Uh, anything? Oke. Okay. So I'm doing in bahasa first. Teman-teman apakah ada yang ingin bertanya? Kalau kalian bisa langsung bahasa Inggris, itu lebih memudahkan saya. Tapi kalau kalian ingin pakai bahasa Indonesia, saya akan mencoba menterjemahkan yang lebih berantakan lagi. Silakan. Hello, it's a great materi made. Uh, I have a two question for you. Before And before what's your is, name? Uh, what's your name? Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, I forgot. My name is Nabil. Your name uh, is Nabil. No. You're uh, from you're from England or you're from Italy? Oh yeah, yes, yes, I'm from England. <laughs> no, I'm from Indonesia. From okay. Indonesia. Okay. My Nabil. first question is how much the data from sports science influence managers to uh, choose players to uh, into into uh, starting eleven? And my second question is what do you feel if you develop player from uh, maybe from eight? from eight years old and until maybe 15 and the bigger 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 academy team hijack or hijack <laughs> your players what do you feel thank you okay he make he make my work easier so thank you so much <laughs> i don't need to translate it you understand what he's saying right matt and <laughs> yeah of course yeah. very good yeah. Please. very good you, I, i think i'll i'll answer the first you answer the sure. second I think it depends really on a manager by manager basis. Um, I know that our current manager, Mickey Mellon, is massive on the data. So he, um, he's got a really strong relationship with our sports science department. And that will form a really big part of um, his, how he's able to, to judge the players and understand who's, who's working hard and, and who isn't working hard. The last manager we had, someone called Keith Hill, was really, really big on work rate. And his assistant managers will do the technical side of things. But Keith Hill was very much, you've got to work hard. And if you're not working hard, the data will show that you're not working hard. And if you're not doing that, then you're not playing on Saturday. So it really depends on the manager by manager basis. Um, some managers swear by it. Um, other managers use it to back up their 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 beliefs, and um, but I think it should become more and more important in the day to day in the in the day to day game. Jadi itu tadi mengatakan yeah. bahwa untuk teman-teman yang selain Nabil tadi yang mungkin perlu peterjemahan bagaimana manajer yang sekarang Mickey Mellon itu adalah seseorang pelatih manajer yang sangat percaya dengan data sehingga data itu dia akan pakai untuk menjadi salah satu bagian penentu siapakah pemain yang akan ditampilkan dan itu juga termasuk yang disampaikan kepada para manajer atau pelatih yang datang dari Surabaya waktu itu Yusuf Ekodono yang menemani pemain-pemain ini dan menjadi bagian dari melihat pentingnya data-data yang ada ini. To uh, to answer the the second question, yeah. how do we feel uh, when the the big sort of teams sort of take our younger players from from the younger age group? As coaches, we're absolutely delighted, mm -hmm. like we're really happy because we're not you know we're not selfish as a club, and it's probably our model is to develop players. So if it's if the bigger clubs come in looking for our players, then it it basically it says that we're doing a good job. Jadi ini kalau pertanyaan kedua, kalau akhirnya di hijack atau di interested by 
other teams itu ternyata mereka malah delighted, mereka ternyata malah senang karena berarti mereka melakukan pekerjaan yang bagus. They doing the great job untuk bisa membuat seorang pemain ini dilirik oleh big clubs atau tim-tim besar. Jadi justru delighted They... gitu. Oke, okay, we gonna Sorry. Yeah. So we gonna Yeah, the just okay. like there's a number of uh, Premier League players at the moment who came through our academy. Uh, so Aaron Cresswell at West Ham came through and signed for 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 West Ham, obviously. And then you've got Tom Davis at Everton. So Everton took Tom Davis when he was 15 okay. in the younger in the younger age groups, and he, he play every day in the Premier League. It makes us really proud as coaches to see to see him playing there. Jadi mereka bangga banget ada pemain yang kemudian diambil oleh West Ham di Premier League, kemudian juga Tom Davis di Everton. Jadi paling nggak pekerjaan mereka berarti diapresiasi dan sangat bagus. Nah, so we gonna run to the second questions, and this is the last question. So and and As I predicted that this session is really make the participants is really interesting. So maybe we gonna have another sessions in the future, like two hour or one day seminar, so we can make another deep or also more, you know, time to get the sure. Indonesian people we've... know about this. Yeah. yeah, we've spoken a, a lot about uh, the analysis part of sports yeah. science today. So maybe in the future, we might look at the strength and conditioning or the nutrition. Yes. You know, we'd, we'd love to be able to talk about that as well. Sure, sure. So this is the second man that gonna ask with Matt and Dan from Tranmi Rovers. Hello, siapa nih? Hello, Matt and Dan. My name is Ilham from Indonesia. Thank you in English. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, but uh, your, your uh, explain about uh, sports science is uh, is uh, not enough in uh, 40 minutes. Uh, I uh, agree with the, uh, Mr. CEO. It's not enough. Maybe we we need uh, three hours or uh, <laughs> four hours to speak about uh, sports science. Uh, but uh, one a little question for uh, one of you: uh, How to uh, amateurs like? Uh, Uh, our friend in here become to coach or have a career in English uh, Premier Leagues uh, because uh, all of we uh, uh, play a, a, a fantasy manager. Okay. Thank you. So we 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 are a huge country that play the fantasy manager. You know the fantasy manager. Right? So, so <laughs> how about that questions, Matt and Dan? <laughs> about the in terms of um, about the opportunity of indonesian people that can coaching in in english uh, in england right. not just the player yeah. that want to play in england <laughs> yeah well that, that's something that we're really trying to to do because when we went to um to indonesia last year i can't tell you how impressed we were um not like with the technical side of the the players the knowledge that the coaches had Uh, and just the generic love for football was absolutely incredible. And that enjoyment and that love for the game is something that you can't coach. That's something that has got to come from within within yourself. Um, and if you've got that, then you're really going to kick on. So we've obviously seen that last year when we when we visited. Um, we want to come back again. We want to have coaches from Indonesia come to come to Tranmere to our training ground. We want players to come over, and we want to give these coaches and these players the opportunity to experience what it's like here in the UK, uh, and really give a sort of platform for for Indonesian coaches and players to to use Tranmere as a as a basis and and something that they someone a club that they can learn from um, and experience and really get into stuck into the British culture that we've got because there are so many opportunities um, and you can. And take it from us we will definitely be focusing on that in the in the next few years um and the the strength and the relationship with indonesian coaches and players is only going to get stronger so we're really looking forward to that jadi Matt tadi bilang bahwa ternyata ini sudah mereka lihat bagaimana pelatih-pelatih indonesia really love football mereka senang banget dengan sepak bola dan itu juga yang mereka lakukan ketika para pelatih yang dari Surabaya tadi datang mereka mencoba untuk memberikan sharing ilmu di sana dan mudah-mudahan dalam beberapa tahun ke depan ini bisa dilakukan kembali dan makin banyak kesempatan untuk pelatih-pelatih indonesia untuk bisa punya ilmu yang sama dengan mereka dan mereka sangat menantikan kesempatan itu datang. Wow, so amazing. And, 
Do you have any? Uh, so, uh, yeah. Just and, and just to say this, like this, what we're doing now is something that we would love to be able to do regularly and, and cover so cover a whole host of topics and, yeah. and create some sort of um, series in which we can really get stuck in and help you guys and help the coaches online um, when we're not able to travel at the moment. Okay. So um, yeah, we 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 very much love to continue these going and, and very excited to do so. Ya, jadi itu juga yang mereka saat ini sangat nanti nantikan dan mereka sedang menyiapkan dengan keadaan yang nggak bisa traveling ke sana sekarang bisa melakukan secara online. Jadi mereka sedang mencoba untuk melakukan itu dan mudah-mudahan itu bisa terlaksana dan kalian semua bisa kalian you you can get the opportunity from Trendy Rovers, oke? Okay? Trend me rovers, not the others club, of course, yes. Aha, uh aha, -huh. uh -huh. and with meals in the jersey, yeah. So, we run of time, Matt and then, and you can see the enthusiasm of the participants. So, really, really, really loved. You can share about your knowledge about the sports science, something like that. So, I really hope that in the future we can do another sessions about, about everything that goes in Trend me rovers because it's really helpful for us to get those informations in here. Then maybe it's also important for our coaches, our players, and our fans of football here. So, for closing statements, what would you like to say, Dan and Matt? The one thing I'd, I'd like to say, uh, particularly for coaches, but also for players, you know, the, the whole use of the analysis and what we've gone through today. That is, uh, it's part of the reflective cycle. So if we always do the same thing, then we'll never improve. So as coaches, you know, you, you don't need all this technology, but you need to have a process where you're constantly improving. Do you reflect on what training was like? How are you going to better yourself to improve the next session? So if you've got that mindset as a coach, if you've got that mindset as a player, then that's really what developments, that, that's what our job is to do. And whether we've got the technology or not doesn't yes. really matter as long as the process of improvement is, is there for everyone. Jadi bagi pelatih dan juga pemain, di luar dari teknologi itu ada atau enggak saat ini di kalian semua, tapi yang paling penting adalah adanya proses dalam sebuah kemampuan kita untuk bisa menjadi lebih baik. Dengan adanya teknologi itu akan membantu dengan belum adanya teknologi itu yang penting adalah adanya proses untuk kita improve dari seorang pelatih yang lebih baik dan juga seorang pemain yang lebih baik. So believe in process. Asik. Yes, perfect. Yes. Oke, okay. Matt and then once again we are delighted and so thankful to have both of you here and I hope the traveling restrictions or something like that from Indonesia can can you know can disappear not disappear lah <laughs> we, 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 we really like to fly there as soon as possible so we can meet you and also watch the Tranmir Rovers at Pranton Park thank you so much yeah, thank, you. thank you very much Thanks, guys. guys thank, thank you. you very much thank you very much jadi teman-teman itulah tadi Matt Hunter dan juga Daniel O'Donnell dari Tranmere Rovers. Ini adalah tim yang saat ini ada di divisi keempat Liga Inggris ya. Liga Inggris, ini bukan di Indonesia. Liga Inggris sebelumnya divisi 3. Dan kalian bisa lihat bagaimana di divisi 4 saja seperti itu perkembangannya. Dan kalian jangan tertipu. Tim divisi 3 pun dan divisi 2 di sana belum semuanya punya sport science seperti Tranmere Rovers. Belum semuanya punya stadion sendiri seperti Tranmi Rovers. Jadi kita dukung Tranmi Rovers supaya semakin banyak memberikan pengetahuan kepada kita, memberikan kesempatan kepada pemain dan pelatih kita ke sana, dan semakin membuat ownernya yang merupakan salah satu dari owner jebret media juga untuk terus mensupport. Siapa tahu seperti Leicester City yang punya orang Thailand menjadi juara. Siapa tahu doa kalian semua membuat Tranmi Rovers pun akan naik ke League 1, Championships dan juga Premier League. Kalau...